Welcome along guys. Well, I'm at Luigi Moto, hence all of the Ducatis behind me. But don't get excited. This isn't a Hypermotard video. This is an H2 video. We're here at CJS Racing to finally get the H2 mapped. I've had it, I've been on about a year getting this bike mapped. I've finally done it. There's a lot of work involved with this. You've got to take all the fairings off. You've got to get the ECU off the bike. But today we're testing not only the mapping and tuning the bike, but also a new way of actually loading the map onto the bike via the diagnostic port. So, so you don't have to remove the ECU. So it's a day full of tech. This could get a little tech heavy, but there'll be plenty of wheels spinning and flames to get you entertained. <laughs> Follow the intro, Chopsy. Here we are, she is on the diner. We're ready to go basically, so just got to connect things up. So the, the plan here today, uh, this is Chris by the way. <laughs> the plan here today is to actually map the H2 per cylinder or two of the cylinders and then, because two are similar, or do you? We're going to do the cylinders in pairs because one and four share the same map and two and three share the same map. Right, okay. The maps are very, very slightly different within a couple of percent each of, of each other. Right. So we're getting away uh, doing the cylinders in pairs, and then uh, if necessary, we we check check the others if necessary. Yeah, because you can actually see on this some of those headers are longer on some cylinders, aren't they, than others? So it's yeah. going to be slightly different. Yeah, on that's the right. Cylinder There's going to be a anyway, slight variance it? between them. Yeah, you can see that that big one sticking out there. Because normal mapping, would you you would take a your airflow reading at the exhaust, which is obviously a combination of all four cylinders. So you, you may have a cylinder which is lean, potentially, you may have another cylinder which is rich and you're getting a good mixture at the, at the end can, but you don't know for sure. The last, time, the last time we remapped something at the tailpipe was over 10 years ago. To do that, we've got to make little holes in my lovely <laughs> head, so that's the only bad thing. So you make a five mil hole, threaded hole, and you tap it, no, we've got special boss installation kit. Use a rivet nut, yep. clamped into the pipe. This boss has got a hole in it. This bolt has got a tiny hole in it. Yeah. The bolt goes through the boss. The lamber goes into the boss, and then we've got a pressure air system that draws. Uh, and that draws off the draws, gas. Draws the gas over, over, the, over, the, over the, the tip of the lamber. Right. And we have tested these before. Uh, when these came out in 2009, we back to back tested this one in the, in the header and this one a little bit further down, and the readings were absolutely identical. Oh, right. So if they weren't identical, we then wouldn't, you wouldn't do it. it. Yeah. Okay, interesting. We're going to map this per cylinder. We're also not using power commanders or any of that sort of stuff. We're going to map this directly on the ECU. So we're going to, that's why the bike stripped down, because I had to take everything off it. The ECU is, I'll just show you the ECU is, it's actually in a plastic bag at the moment because it was pissing down on the way here and she got wet. But the ECU is behind the cowl on these bikes. You have to take a whole of the fairing off. It's, and then not only is it in the cowl, it's in a metal cage with tamper proof screws for the European bike. So I've, I've had to actually use my angle grinder <laughs> to get the ECU off this bike. So. Yeah, not, not the best start. So we take the ECU off. We, what would you do then, Chris? Take the ECU off, then we're gonna... We would normally read the data from the ECU. And then we would put the data into a hex editor. Right. Uh, the hex editor of my choice is Winnells from EVC. Yeah. It's, it's the best hex editor there is. Right. Uh, it's used by all the pro tuners. And, then, and even so, some OEM manufacturers. Right, so, so you then basically, you, you're editing those fuel ta tables directly. Yeah, we're changing all. the hex directly. So it's not a Woolwich map, it's not an overlaying bit of software you're using to communicate with the ECU, you're doing it directly in the ECU. Yeah, we're gonna data. edit the raw, the raw the, data of the ECU, and then we're gonna use a flash tool to send it back in. So we're extracting the information from the ECU with a tool of choice. Yeah. And then we're putting the information into a hex editor, we're going to modify the data and then use our tool of choice to put, put the back. information back to the ECU. What we're going to test today as well is a, is a way of flashing it via the diagnostic port as well. Yes, we're going to test so the you, diagnostic port flash today. Yeah, so we may not have to do this again. It's may have, I may have wasted my time taking all this off if, if our diagnostic flash 
work through the canvas. It's all very technical. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll let Chris explain the, the technical stuff. Every time I ride it, I'm like, well, you know, it's bloody fast anyway. And you think, does it need any more? Does it need any more? But just that, that mid-range surge, it's... I think you said that no one else has complained about that, did they, on the no, other one you had? No, no one has, no. No, I, I just find it a little bit snappy. If you're mid-corner, yeah. do you know what I mean? It, so we'll see what the, if you can prove the fuel in mid-range as well, that would be... Yeah, well, we'll get the fuel in fixed. We'll see if we can remove the, the fuel cut. Or should I say, re-enable the fuel cut. What's the fuel cut then, what you mean there? Well, when you shut the throttle off, on the older generation bikes, fuel was still delivered to the cylinder. Right. Uh, since about 2012, maybe 2013, I'm not sure of the exact year. When you now shut the throttle off, the fuel is completely shut off. Oh. So when you come back on the gas, it comes in with a big Oh, that's the sur that could be the surge I'm noticing then. Ah. So uh, the trend is now is to re-enable the fuel cut to switch it back on. I guess that was an emissions type of thing. Yeah, that's it. it. And yeah. to save fuel when you, when you let the throttle off. Yeah, okay. But that's, that's probably what I'm feeling. That, that, that initial picks up yeah, again, really snatchy. See how hard that Japanese titanium is. Does that do then? That, that, that presses a little bustling, does it? It does, yeah. Finished article. It looks factory. It does, doesn't it? Boss made in cylinder three and cylinder one. That's the little adapter where you then pull the air through. So you're pulling air over the lambda sensor and the lambda sensor plugs in the end. There it is. And in. So that's the vacuum, that little tube in coming off the, both the cylinders. Connecting here and then, so the actual vacuum pump's on the dyno itself, is it? It is, yeah. So this is backing up my ICU now, so connect yeah. it to your box of tricks. How do you know what pins to go to? Is that just because you did one? Yeah, it's because I've done them so many times. I just need to check where the K-line goes, I think. No, I know where it goes, K-line's in the middle. K line, we're going to ask. K line is the transmission line. Okay. That goes there. So, this tool is made by uh, Piacini Engineering. And okay. it's a bloody good tool for Japanese bikes. However, this, this tool has been purposely modified. Has it? <laughs> good old treetop tuning. This is treetop tuning flashbox. <laughs> That one's got something in it, I presume, though, not just a timer. <laughs> yeah, it's not an empty box. <laughs> Controversial. So now we're happy. My ECU is identical to the one we have, and we've backed it up. We're going to do a couple of runs now. I'll be quite interested to see how the Vandimon is standard, because, you know, they, they say you can run it without having to get it mapped. You know, the standard fueling's OK, so we will see. <laughs> This one is cylinder three. Okay. Which is this one here. So is that is it below the green line rich? Yeah. And above its lean, yeah? That's right, yeah. Okay. And in between the red and the green is where it's going to be optimal. Yeah, it is to the sort of recommended, the recommended the recommended area. On this one we're gonna change the recommended area. We're gonna try and set it to about twelve point five. Okay. Is that richer than normal or leaner than normal then? A bit richer, a bit richer than just to protect it with the yeah, yeah, usually the, you know, the the figure that everyone shoots for on a normally aspirated engine is about 13.1, 12.8, right. you know, somewhere in that sort of range. And we're gonna we're gonna aim for about 12.5. Right. Well, you can see that here it dives rich, and then it goes down off the scale rich. Right. 
And then if we look at cylinder one, cylinder one is a complete mess. Oh, yeah. Up and down, up and down, over place, isn't it? And that's cylinder one and three together. Right. So they're far from optimised. So you did, you did one of these last year. Yeah, it was about six or seven months ago, and I it, think. And it had the Van Diemen on as well, so that was handy. So we're going to load that file onto mine as a starting point. We are, but first I'm going to check it. I'm going to have a quick look to see if it's a relative match or whether we're going to start the tune in from fresh. Okay. What well, relative match from that starting point, from standard you mean? So compare it standard with mine standard? That's it, yeah. Okay, moving. So the tune for the last buy into my ACU, run it up again, see yeah. where it is. This time we're testing it at different throttle positions. Yeah, because that was only full power, I guess that was just wide open. Yeah, that was just the air baseline. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're testing the new tune at the different throttle positions, yeah. and then we're adjust the map yeah. to suit. Yeah, okay, mate. With standard on these, it's got to shut the throttle bodies, isn't it? Around 10k or something, with standard they're set up to... Sh to so you can't, if you just were to power command of these, you can't do it because you have to disable the throttle body uh, restrictions. restrictions yeah. Yeah. The throttle body is programmed to close. Yeah, that's because Kawasaki didn't want to release a bike which is 250 horsepower. That's it, so I can show you the uh, the ETV map. So this is the program Winnells, which is a, a unique hex editor. So this is the complete information from the ECU. Yeah. And as you can see, it's not in human readable form at all. Yeah. You know, pick out the boost maps or the fuel maps or the timing maps or, you know, whatever you're trying to find. You ain't going to find it. If we look in two dimensional, okay, so I can tell you that's an ignition map just by looking at it. Okay. That's an ignition map and so is that. And I can tell you that just by sight because I know. So these are what you call structures, which are, you know, the, the 3D map lookup tables. Now, the map lists don't come with the program winnels. Right. You don't get any map lists. You need to have a contact it an OEM manufacturer to oh, get a map list. Right. Or you need to know a reverse engineer that can create the map lists. Or you have to be pretty good and be able to do it yourself. So what, 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 which one of the above did you did you do a bit of each? <laughs> yeah, I I uh, I do all three. Right. Right, let's go and find the ETV. Maps. So something like Woolwich Flash Software, for example, sort of sits on top of this and gives the the, the operator like a simple interface to to, to manipulate yeah. that data, yeah, that's basically. It. Yeah, the Woolwich interface does manipulate the raw ECU code. Yeah, you know the data in the hex file. Of course, it does. Uh, but the way it's done, it's in a in a user friendly format, yeah, exactly. which is which is really good for plug and play tuning. Yeah, but this is you're in, you're in the raw data. Yeah, right? here we're actually in the raw data itself. There we are. ETV characteristics. So if we look at the ETV characteristics for gear six, what's ETV stand for? Electronic throttle valve. Uh, okay, so this is the throttle body position, is it? Yeah, this is it. Now this map is a limit. It's a limiter. So we've got. Well, there's a map just to control their throttle bodies. I suppose there has to be, doesn't there? So that's it. Yeah, there's there's plenty. There's about forty maps to control the throttle bodies. So the x-axis along the top is twist grip. Right. So if I pin the twist grip to one hundred percent, we're going to yeah. be using this column there. Yeah. This is the this is the uh, the engine speed. So ten thousand revs. The maximum throttle limit is ninety nine. 13,000 revs, the maximum limit is dropped to 32. Oh, really? So you can see that the throttle was completely closed. So it was at 99%, is that, is it? It and was. It's closed to 30%. Yeah. At 10,000 revs, it starts to close. Yeah, you can actually feel that on the bike when you're, when you're, when you're riding it. And you can see it here. So at, at this point here, it starts to close. Yeah. So after the, the mapping, really, that, you'd see that, that carry on climbing as opposed to start to tail off. Yeah, so we expect to see. Yeah. yeah, certainly. So ECU's back on. We've now got a one-to-one -one throttle connection. Yeah, we've got a one-to-one -one throttle connection with the engine. So as the yeah, so so that whereas before it wasn't, it wasn't one-to-one. -one. That's right. So now if we ask for fifty percent at the twist grip, we get fifty percent at the engine. Yeah. Okay. Whereas before, if we asked for fifty percent at the twist grip, we would get at the engine what was in the map yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. 
Right, so next run, it's got the new map information on there now, based on the other H2 that Chris mapped, so we're going to run it up now, see what the field is like, and then adjust to suit from there. But next power run, so let's do it. same mapping yeah so you can see that there's a, a difference in the air fuel ratio even though the mapping is it's exactly the same uh, I've got a feeling that your baffle is killing the baffles killing me about 20 horsepower yeah I'm a bit surprised I'm a bit surprised well, how's the fuel looking with the, the fuel in's nearly so there which one, which one is if I take away the blue the blue is the last job which is identical to yours yeah but without a baffle well, without a baffle, and this one's yours, so it's still over fueling. To be honest, I don't think the baffle makes much difference on noise, that's as loud as they come already. You reckon that's as loud as the. I, I personally think we should get a ticket thing out. So get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should take it out and have a look, couldn't we? Yeah. But it is it's crazy loud, but the thing with it is, I think once it's. Well, we could try it out, I suppose, couldn't we? See if it's any different. So what's that? So it's 225 you said now, so that's 15 up on what it was. 228 and it was 210 you said when we came here? Yeah. So that's before and after on yours. Yeah, over the top. You can see it just carries on pulling, doesn't it? It could dies off before big time, doesn't it? And we can either take the, the baffle out and do a run and see how much difference it actually changes the air fuel. That's, yeah, that'd be good. So I'd like to try and keep it really... We can see the noise difference as well. Or we could just tune it with the baffle in and see what it turns out at. Yeah, it is really noisy about the baffling. I mean, I'm, 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 not, I'm not really chasing power figures Let's anyway. Let's get a torch and have a look down the I'm way. trying to, uh, the idea of doing this was trying to smooth it out a bit. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you know what I mean? I know it's nice to say it's 250 horsepower, but that isn't the, uh, that isn't really the goal. <laughs> That's a nice to have. <laughs> If I've got to move because my neighbours lynch me, then uh, it's no good. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I get pulled over the old wheel and told to put the stand on my back on. Yeah. That's the other issue, isn't it? That is the baffle. Okay, decision's taken. We're going to leave the baffle in. Um, I do want some neighbours. I don't want to get pulled over by the old bill every five minutes. <laughs> so the baffle's staying in. We're going to now try and fix the fueling or get the fueling better optimised. So we may pick up a bit more power once the fueling's optimised as well, of course, because she's still quite rich at the top end. So she's 228 now. A bit more tweaking. We may pick up. What do you reckon we might pick up, Chris? What do you reckon? It's got to be another 10. You reckon pick up another 10 with some tweaking? Hopefully. 238 then. Thank you. It's enough, isn't it? <laughs> What's your processing, Chris? You look at the. Uh... The, the air fuel mixture and then you direct edit it directly on there looking at how rich or lean it is yeah that's it so generally you know for one point change one point of a change in air fuel you're looking at about eight to ten percent change in the map okay. to get it to shift so because we're we're tuning it slightly different in a different way it does get a little bit complicated yeah but the red trace is cylinder one. So if we take if we take cylinder three away, that's cylinder one at five degrees throttle angle, which right. is your part throttle. And you can see that it's absolutely spot on perfect. Right. Whereas if you look at cylinder three, cylinder three is not perfect. It's still pretty lean 
uh, up to around 4,000 RPM. And what throttle position is this? This is five degrees five on degrees. the twist grip. So we've tuned that in on the main map for cylinder three. Right. So that's the whole different. So that whole thing's just five degrees. Yeah. Once, yeah. once I've once I've got the once I've got the two cylinders mirrored. Yeah. Then I'll change the global trim. Right. In order to pull everything flat. Right. Because the global trim adjusts all four cylinders together. Whereas the main maps adjust the cylinders individually. Right, with you. Yeah, so I'll pull everything up and down in one in one go. In one go. Yeah, that makes sense. You would adjust all of the maps individually. Right. Okay. Using the global trim, as long as the cylinders are aligned, you can save a bit of time. your first lot of changes in now yeah we've made the the first lot of changes we're writing it back to the ECU to now the appropriate maps and we're going to uh, try again fashion them back here and see where we're at so again we're going to use the Piacini area uh, engineering serial suite to write the ECU in boot mode check some okay You back on. See where we are. So originally we ran it, then we put on the map he had from the other H2 he had in, so the base map. We run that, that made the 228 horsepower. From the readings from that mapping, he's now adjusted that map to suit my bike. And now we're going to see how those changes, what they've actually done, how it's affected the air fuel mixture. And then we go from there. So we may need to make another set of changes after this run um, to tweak it. He's also noticed the uh, poor throttle response I was talking about. So hopefully we'll be able to do something with that as well. I hope so. That's the main reason for having it done. I'm not just chasing numbers here. If I was, I'd be taking the raffle out. before it's going to be uh, even more mental now. Just for road, nah, just for road really, just for road. Just for road. Just for road. <laughs> it's not it's not quick enough for track. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it the front wheel down, really. It's sort of two and a half seconds, something like that. If you can launch, it's all about launching it, isn't it? Without winning it, that's the thing. We'll obviously hear you coming before we see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, guys.
at 238 horsepower. 238, but yeah. And we started off at 210. And you can see the, you know, the complete difference of holding, yeah, the, yeah. holding the throttle open and yeah. fixing the fuel. You can see that the cylinders that, that we're measuring it, 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 at the moment, cylinder one and cylinder three, they were both off the scale. Ah, so the blue's the old one. Yeah, and the, the red. Yeah, the blue and the red and the is the, what they um, are. the brown is is cylinder. It's the new cylinder uh, yeah. one and three. So you can see that we're well within our target now. Yeah. Uh, the mixture is at about twelve point five flat. You know, there might be a bit more power in it by, you know. Yeah, no. That's uh, putting it up to thirteen, but then it's yeah. a bit debatable. I'd rather run it safe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, push it. You know, you get the critics out there that say you can't run thirteen to one on a supercharged engine. Yeah, no. We stay safe. So we're gonna keep it at twelve five. Uh, I don't think we're going to get any more horsepower from it. No. Is that 238? 238. We might hit 240. Uh, the baffle is definitely stealing something yeah, from us. I would yeah. say 10 horsepower. Yeah. Yeah, that would. That, that, yeah, it's to be expected, really, isn't it? 10 yeah, horsepower it's, is not it's, too bad, actually. I, I can live with 10 horsepower. Yeah. You know, but for a baffle bike, the, that system is pretty damn good, really. Yeah. It's a nice system. I like it. See, that, that's the new air fuel cylinder one and three. So that's just the new, yeah, not the old. That's just this is the new. new. Yeah. New air fuel cylinder one and three. What's that little power knock at the top? Is that just where it... That's just a bit of a miscommunication in the dyno. Ah, okay. It's, yeah, just yeah. Had a, it's just had a bit of an epi... epi it's mis lost it for a second, yeah. Yeah, it's lost the USB connection for a second. You know, there, we can just tweak that in. It's yeah. 13.21, so we need 5 or 6% at 7,000 revs. Yeah. You know, not that it's going to give any difference to the no, power yeah. reading. Uh, but, you know, a nice flat air fuel, you know, it makes the customer happy. <laughs> Once we've got this fully tuned, we're going to try the cam. Was it a cam bus or those? The cam bus. The cam OBD, bus yeah. OBD flashing. Flash. So we're going to flash through that plug there. What well, hasn't worked to start with, it, it cut out. Kept cutting out of the bike, didn't it? Well, on our clone ECU. Oh, and well, what we're going to do on my because the clone, we think the clone ECU might be the clone faulty ECU, or we don't know the history damaged. of it. Yeah, okay, so we're going to try it on mine. We're going to try it on yours. But save the information risk. first. <laughs> and then uh, if you've got to go in without an ECU, then. Oh, well. Wow. Um, Good job I didn't write it down then, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Seven thousand RPM on the global trim map. I'm going to put in four or five percent just to drop that into our okay. into our range. So we're going to try and flash my ECU on the bike now via the canvas. canvas flashing. This would mean if this works, hopefully it will work. That you can get your H2 maps without having to strip it down. Which and his LX10. And his LX10 as well, eh? Ah, what, what, what year? What, the latest one? 2016 to present day. Ah, okay, that's worth that. That's good. And probably the new ZZR 1400 as well. Right. And the new GTR 1400. Oh, right, yeah. Anything from 2016 up with the Mitsubishi ECU. Okay. You should now be able to flash through the diagnostic plug with the Greek's devastatingly new software. <laughs> I'm gonna go in through there. That's the diagnostic port. Yeah, I'm gonna bring the laptop round to this side, I think. This is this yeah. way, is it? A Lamb Chops Edition Canvas software <laughs> that Pedelis was up just for me. into late last night to try and to compile it. Uh, so his company is PV Tech, ECU, R&D. The guy's a bloody genius when it comes down to breaking ECU protocols. Right. Uh, a lot of people use him for reverse engineering jobs. Uh, myself, I've been using him for many, many years now, 10, 10 11 years maybe. Have you? He's really good. Ready? Yeah. Steady. Go. So this is the data we've just... Mm. It's, it's in. It's doing it. It's doing something. The first Fingers reflash to a H2 via the canvas diagnostic port. Exciting stuff. Come on. And the bike's alive. It's done. That's it. So that's flash the bike flash from the, the bike canvas the with port. the ECU on the bike, no need to remove the ECU. First in the world. First in the world. Well done PV Tech. There we go, first time ever. H2 flashed with the ECU in place. Well after that success we've got a cup of splash. Oh, on the floor there. 
Uh, it's a couple of splash, quick break, and then we get back to it. One more run, do you reckon, Chris? One more. Maybe. Well, one more just to check the mapping you just did. I think from an air fuel point of view, that's going to be solved. Yeah. For the, um, the ride by wire issue, I think we're going to need a couple more attempts at do that you? to refine okay. it. Okay. And then what I we're going to. I don't really want to leave that bit unsolved. No, okay, fair because enough. If someone else comes in with a H2 in the future, yeah, you want to know what you want like to do. For that solution to be completely fixed. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> And then what we're going to do at the end, take the baffle out, let the unclimp the air feed, get a few flames and see what it could have made with, uh, with no baffle in. Okay, final one. Well, maybe not final. Next run. Seven, 238 horsepower at 13,000 revs. Yeah. Uh, and then if we look, when it came in, 210 brake. Amazing, amazing 210 brake. Wow, that's an amazing difference. So it starts to make more power. When does the power start to? It comes on again at 12,000. Yeah, so it carries on. But when it starts to creep away, what's that? About 6,000 revs, is it? So it's hard to see if we uh, It creeps away, the power on the original falls away. Yeah. Around 11,500. Yeah, and that's when the throttle body starts to close up. Yeah, and then at this point here, the throttle body closes down to about 30%. Yeah. And you can see that fuel is dumped in. Yeah. Massively. Yeah. So there we go, correction of the, the baffled the Van baffled. der Man yeah. exhaust. Exactly, with a baffle in. With a baffle in. That's not too shabby, really. Not too shabby at all. And I'll see you unclip the. Uh, yeah, I unclipped the, uh, yeah. the air injection. I saw a couple of big, big flames. Is, could you see any flames? Because I couldn't want a very good angle to see it when you were on. I could certainly hear it. How was the, uh, how was the uh, throttle? It's definitely improved. You'll have to have a film and decide yeah. for yourself. Yeah. I'm going to make one more adjustment to that when okay. we flash it the final time. Okay. So what's the plan now? They're just you're happy with the fuel now. So the fuel, yeah, the fuel is perfect. Happy. The ignition's fuel we uh, just, perfect. We just All the it. cylinders are perfect. Uh, we're just going to uh, do a couple of experiments on the throttle progression just to try and get rid of that big surge. Yeah, I mean it wasn't terrible, but it, you know what I mean. If, even if you've improved it, because you take you put the fuel back in as you close the throttle, haven't you? So That's that it. Help. And I've adjusted the I've adjusted the ride by wire as well. Yeah, the so first transition. Yeah, so you've changed that as well. So yeah, I'll have a try then too. It's yeah. Fun. So what we're doing is we get the bike in third gear, activate the brake on the dyno, get some headphones on. Yeah. And uh, you can have a little feel for yourself. Feel if it feels better. Okay, excellent. You can have a feel for yourself. You don't Ooh. need to sit on the bike. You can sit on the bike if you want to. Yeah, well, I should be able to, should be able to tell. Yeah, third gear, you should it's be worth, able to tell. I'm, I'm tempted to just whip the baffle out and just see in that final run and see. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. We do that. If we take the baffle out, we can just see what yeah, we Yeah, if we let her cool, we take the Yeah, well, I, don't, I don't fancy touch it at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Shortage. <laughs>
252. Oh wow. <laughs> what does the fuel need look like at 250? Uh, it's got lean. It's got lean, is it? Yeah, so doing these cylinders individually yeah, without yeah, baffle yeah, yeah. is worth a turn of bloody power. Yeah, 252. There, so you can see now. Oh god, it's well gone lean, isn't it? It's it's baffling. Even even the shape of the air fuels yeah. with the baffle out it's, it's changed, it's changed it? dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. And even with a lean air fuel, well. It's not really lean, is it? Let's no, have a look. Thirteen point two forty. Yeah, it is, you can't you can't really you can't ride, you can't ride it, it like that. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to see like a flat thirteen or a flat yeah, twelve point five. Yeah. The air fuel has changed substantially by taking the baffle out. Yeah. So what one was that? Was that the one you did before? That was that the two four eight one? This was, was the two hundred and forty eight. Okay. Whereas um, it was from one for memory, two uh, we looked through the runs on the last. On the last go, we're averaging at two, three, seven. Yeah. And you can see that the air fuel is nice. Is is a lot different. Cool. Though. So it's two three eight with the baffling, which is how I'm running it. All in it made two yeah. five two. And it made two five two on the last run without the baffle. Well, but the PC crashed. Yeah, yeah. and then it's slightly lean like that as well. So that's two four eight. Is that two four eight on the two four, two four eight on that last one? Two four eight, and then the throttle response also seems better. Now we've done that. Yeah, so not tested it. it. What seemed, did you think? Yeah, it seemed better. It seemed better. I, I don't think it's worth playing with it anymore. No, you don't want to flash it again no, and, and I, test. I think leave it like that. Okay, well you can try it. And I can try it, it, and then the worst case we can have another. Well, that's it. Yeah, it if if you want to ride out one day on a sunny day, yeah, yeah, you I mean, really it wouldn't need take to long, would it? Because that's all we'd have no. to do is just yeah, we just just modify the ride by wire. We're taking make it a little bit more tamer yeah, okay and um now we can reflash by the oh, yeah, 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 one. of course yeah i don't even have to uh, you don't even have to strip the bike down oh, yeah, so that. we're literally bike could pull up with all the fairings on and they can just, just go straight into that connector there yeah and within 50 seconds you flashed it again the full dump will be oh, in the better, ecu yeah brilliant so definitely thanks again to the greek the greek he's a genius well there's a lot of geniuses out there, but the Greek is definitely one of them. He's one of them. Fair play. Uh, I forgot what I was doing, mate. <laughs> I totally Get forgot. Getting a cup I of tea, though, I reckon. Put your yeah. feet up. That's a good day's work. If you're having your bike dynoed, if they don't give you an air fuel readout at the end of it, you know something's amiss. Wouldn't you agree, Chris? Yeah, just have a look on the uh, Bennett's insurance page. Oh yeah, okay. That would happily clear a few things up. So there we go. That's it. Fine. All the cylinders mirrored. Oh wow, well, yeah. And then if we look and see how it was in the beginning, which was, no, nope, that was mods. It was that one there. So that's before there and after, is it? Blues up, but blues before, reds after. Yeah, good luck. Look how lean it is, it's at the big, very lower end of the throttle range as well. Like the, the what, lower, here? Yeah, they're right at the bottom, really lean. Well, it? this is a bit of a misconception because yeah. that part of the map is never going to be used. Uh, because that's on the... Okay, so yeah. if you look at a full power dyno graph, uh, you know, this, is, this run is purely a 100% run, so we've pinned the throttle at 3,000 reps. Oh, I see, okay. okay? So by pinning the throttle at 3,000 revs, it showed, it did show a little bit lean at that area, but it doesn't really matter because when you're riding the bike, are you going to pin the throttle to the stop in sixth gear at 3,000 revs? The answer is no. Yeah. You'll be using that, that way, yeah. this area up. Yeah, exactly. On the lower throttle positions, 25%, that's more important. 12.5%, Six percent, four percent, which is you're cruising in traffic range. Yeah. If it's lean in that area, then you have to do something about it. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, your ride is just going to be shit. Yeah. So now, just got to test it on the road now. Brilliant. Yeah, I think we just need a cup of tea, let everything cool down. And that's it. Good and, done. Uh, yeah. Pat ourselves on the back. Well, that's pat, it. pat you on the back, mate. I've just stood about. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. This is power level one, which is full power. What's 
Is it done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>